Right, today I'm gonna to run you through five quick drills to make your freestyle stroke more efficient and more powerful. Right, before we dive into the drills themselves, let me run through the fundamentals of the freestyle stroke. So, the hands should enter in line with our shoulders, like so. We're not entering in the center, we're not entering out wide to the side, in line with our shoulder. And then it's the rotation that allows us to bring the hand into the center. We start the stroke with the catch phase, and then we're moving into the pull phase. And as you can see, the hand is in the center, it's directly below me. Below my center of mass, it's not out to the side, and it's not crossing over. I'm balancing and supporting myself almost on that hand. That's a very strong position, and essentially we want to be tracking that hand all the way down the center. You can also see I'm rotated onto my side, so that I'm using these large Latin back muscles. And then as I pull through, I'm almost pushing my hip out of the way, rotating onto the other side, the hand will exit by my hip, and then I recover over the surface of the water. So it's essentially this movement. Now today, what I want to work on is that movement of our arm through the water and also the rotation. Two key areas that a lot of people struggle with and to work on those, we're gonna do some drills. Right, so my first drill is what I call the torpedo kick. You're essentially making yourself like a torpedo. You're putting your arms down by your side and we're literally just gonna kick. We're taking the arms out of the equation and we are just focusing on the rotation and kick. Now the key here is everything moves in sync. So with our arms by our side, we're gonna do six kicks on our front face down in the water before then rotating everything in sync, shoulders and hips move together and then six kicks to our side. You can obviously take a breath to the side and then rotating six kicks to front and then to a right. And you keep repeating that over and over. Now the key here, as I've mentioned, is rotating everything in sync. So that means keeping your trunk and your core engaged and nothing is leading ahead of the other. Everything moves together, including the head. Now obviously this is working on the mechanics of the rotation, but you do want to keep the kick going throughout. So keep a constant flutter with the leg kick and actually you might find that you find the leg kick helps with the rotation to a degree. This is a pretty slow moving drill, so to help you might want to put fins on just to help with that added propulsion and added speed. But in terms of the drill, you might just want to do half a length of torpedo kick and then half a length swim off. And then as you progress and become more comfortable with it, you might be able to do a full length or two at a time. All right, the next drill is a bit of progression of the last one. It's what we call three swim, six kick. It's almost bringing the full freestyle stroke into that kick rotation. So for this, we are gonna perform three full stroke freestyle strokes, two, three, before rotating onto our side and performing six kicks. And then one, two, three, six kicks. Now, what I love about this drill is that when you've done the three strokes and you're rotated onto your sides, kick for six, it gives you time to think about the next three strokes. You can set yourself up and perform your three best strokes you possibly can. So when I'm in this position, I'll start thinking about engaging my core and then I start that first stroke and it should feel really nice and powerful. I'm on my side, I get my lats and my back involved and it's three really strong and efficient strokes and then onto my side again. And again, you can perform this drill with fins as you can with most drills really, just to make the drill as easy as possible and you can focus on the technique as best as you possibly can. However, this drill should mostly be using the arms. You're trying to propel yourself along with a lot of the arm movement rather than the leg kick. You can start off just doing half a length of this at a time, but you should quite quickly find yourself being able to complete a length or more. Okay, this next drill, I don't think many of you will have done before. And in fact, I'm not even sure I know what it's called. I'm gonna call it mid skull drill. But anyway, the idea of this drill is to essentially get you used to that arm movement and where it's placed underneath our center of mass. Now, as I described earlier, if your hands out to the side one way or the other, you're gonna be off balance and not in a very strong position and actually, can cause your body to move and snake a bit, which is obviously inefficient and wasting energy. The body's underneath us, and if you imagine you are supporting yourself on the floor here, you're in a really strong and stable position. It's directly below you. 
it's exactly the same with swimming. So a hand is moving down underneath through that pool phase. Now this drill is trying to emphasize that to a degree. We're basically gonna have the hand directly below us here. We're gonna have the other hand in its recovery position. It's just gonna dangle there, do whatever you like with it. And then this hand is just gonna scull down. Now, obviously this isn't a movement you would do in the freestyle stroke, but it's just getting used to that position and the angle of the arm. And you're just pushing down, probably just trying to keep the body up on the surface of the water and a little flutter with the leg kicks. I'd suggest doing six to eight leg kicks and then continue into a few freestyle strokes and then repeat the same. Okay, my penultimate drill is definitely a drill that you have heard me talking about before. It's the front skull drill, but I've got a slight progression for you here because I understand that the front skull drill is quite a hard one to master. And a lot of people have said, I love the drill, but I move nowhere. So I'm gonna add something into here, this here. We're actually gonna start with a skull that many of you may have done as kids in the pool with our hands down by our side. We're going to go head first on our backs down the lane and we're gonna skull with our hands down by our side, keeping our arms fairly straight, maybe a slight soft elbow. And we're gonna make a little figure of eight with our hands. So you're basically doing this movement with your hands down by your hips. Now the reason I want you to do this is to get you used to that feel for the water, being able to push and move the water. In fact, when you're stood at the end of the lane, you should be able to put your hands in the water and move the water and really feel like you've got pressure on the water throughout. If you feel like your hands are just slipping around, then you haven't got the grasp of it, literally. So practice that, push yourself down the water with your hands by your side, and then progress into the front skull drill, which as I said, we've mentioned many times before on the channel, we start with our hands in line with our shoulders, and we're sculling out about a foot to the side before then bringing the hands back into the center. Now you can imagine a pile of sand in the middle, and we're splitting that pile of sand and then we're bringing the sand back together. And you, again, you should feel like you're moving the water and that should actually propel you down the lane. If you find that you're not moving, you can actually put a slight pitch in the hand and just that will help a little bit more with that. To help with this so you don't feel like you're sinking in the water, put a pool boy in between your legs. You can do a small flutter with the legs, but mostly the propulsion should be coming from the hands. Now for the final drill, and it's actually a bit of a follow-on from the previous drill, which is all about being able to get a purchase of the water as soon as the hand enters, being confident in this space of water where a lot of people often slip through. So we're trying to improve that. And another way of doing that is with the water polo drill. And yeah, this is literally trying to swim like water polo players. Obviously when water polo players are playing, they are keeping an eye on the ball and so they've got their head up above the water. We're gonna do the same, just hopefully a little less splashy and thrashy. So for this, we're going to keep our head up, looking straight down the lane ahead. So we may be looking at the block at the end of the pool and keep your eyes fixated on that. And then we're gonna do normal freestyle arms and legs. Now for this, you want to make sure, again, the hands are entering in line with the shoulders and we're still tracking and pulling our arms underneath us. But by having the head up, what you're going to find is that you need to catch at the front. Otherwise, you are gonna start sinking in the water. So it's almost forcing us to get that catch. So as the hand enters, get that elbow up, we're pushing down on the water and then into the pool. Okay, so keep looking down the lane and pushing down on the water at the catch and then into the freestyle stroke. You can again kick with the legs. You can actually have a pool boy in or you can use fins to help make this easier. Well, there's my five quick swim drills, although you might argue that wasn't very quick, but hopefully that was a good explanation for you. And if you've got any more questions, please drop them in the comment section down below. I'd also suggest these drills for any swimmer of any ability, they're always useful. You can start off again, just doing them over short distances, 10, 20, 25 meters before progressing. And I'd often always advise swimming off at the end, just to really try and focus on that technique that you've been trying to hone in on the drill. If you can, add these into each session, even if it's just the shortest part in a warm up or where it warmed down. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please do give it a thumbs up, give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe.